All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, comment section. Fill it up like you did the last video. That was super fun, super awesome. Love it. Uh, I don't care what you comment about. Sarcasm, the neighbor's dog. I had have fun with it. Talk to each other down there. Uh, it's always a great place. <clears throat> Disclaimer. I don't recommend anything for anybody other than do your own testing. Other disclaimer, let's talk in dollars in versus dollars out. Cash flow, profit per acre, not yield per acre because yield doesn't correlate profit. The other thing I always preach about is let's farm in a manner that allows us to build nutrient rich soil without being dependent upon outside sources. So we're more, we're more self-sufficient, we're more sustainable. We leave a better farm for the next generation. Hopefully they can have a better quality of life and we improve our quality of life while we're transitioning or, or while we're on the farm. Uh, that's the whole point of Make Farming Great again is that, and soil health, is that we family and the land become more of the focus than just pure yield and, and competition, if, if that makes sense. If that don't make sense for you, um, we need to have some discussions on the side. Uh, so our reduced fertility program, the big thing is it's it's me versus me. It's not my field compared to my neighbor's field. Compared to myself, if we kind of use some of the neighbor's land as a benchmark, <clears throat> so I'm following my neighbor's trends. When I've, I've been combining for the neighbors for over a decade, my yields are going right with their yields. <clears throat> compared to myself, we have reduced our inputs by by at least $100 an acre. Looking at next year's prices, we're looking at our corn program to be almost uh, $200 a, an acre cheaper than what the recommended fertility program is. So we've got, since 2015, we've run a very, very, very cheap P and K program. I don't believe you can mine the soil without backhoes and dump trucks. Um, the soil is comprised of P and K and the other minerals our plants need. We're trying to farm in a manner that frees that stuff up and makes a plant available. So on paper, you still see uh, very poor ground. <laughs> on paper, our soil up here, I've taken it to many retail clinics. You know when you get these flyers that such and such fertility company is going to be at the Holiday Inn of Shakopee or Glencoe or Mankato or blah 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 and uh, Alexandria blah 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 you go there and you show them your soil test and you tell them yeah I'd like to grow 180 bushel corn most of them laugh at you and be like this this is going to CRP right and you're like no that that's some of my best land and they're just like <laughs> catch a load of this guy so, so our soil is a little challenging, let's, let's just say that. Uh, but we've been running a very, over that, two, from 2015 to 21, uh, over that time frame, I'd say what we've applied versus what would have been recommended over that time frame, we've probably only put down 10%. Um, and the big thing here is uh, your crops will talk to you very quickly. Corn is, is a very good indicator of a deficiency. Its leaves will, will, will blotch or stripe or the plant will change color uh, if it's got any deficiencies at all. And we've seen none of them deficiencies. We've still had good stock strength. Uh, ear development is still good. The cob doesn't banana. The rows stay straight. They don't twist. Um, good ear retention. You know, you don't have a whole lot of eardrop in the fall. Uh, so, so, so far all indicators, yields trend lining with, with the neighbors, uh, if, the, if they're going to be our benchmark for what's happening in the area, uh, yields trend lining, um, crop quality is maintaining or, or still doing just fine, uh, cash flow is getting better because uh, we, one, we've reduced the tillage costs. And I think if you look at a conventional program around here, looking at uh, custom rates or, or from the University of Iowa, the, the rates to do this stuff, 
uh, would be 40 to $60 an acre. Uh, so on $4 corn, you're talking 10 to 15 bushel just to do the tillage. And then the fact that we're saving a lot of money on the fertilizer. So on P and K for next year, uh, it's it's 30. As of a month ago, it was like 30, almost $35 a hundred. So you'd be about $45 for each P and K uh, for recommended for 180 bushel, almost $50. <clears throat> Let's just say $50 for for easy math. Um, and then that's a real very realistic. Uh, number that they're going to take about 125 pounds each so a quarter uh, of 35 uh, is almost 10 so yeah $45 $45 would be very accurate so it's $90 for some 923.30 for next year's corn per acre and then nitrogen is going to be almost you know the, the the local people are going to recommend that if you have 180 bushel goal we'd like to see you apply 180 bushel or 180 units of, of nitrogen. And so on the PNK, they're recommending 90. Uh, if I do any, uh, I'll be putting $20 an acre. And so, you know, you go to a quarter, what's a quarter of 90 is 20, 20, 25 bucks. So I'll do $25 an acre, so we're saving, or 20, so we're saving $70 an acre right there. On the nitrogen, uh, one field is going into legumes. Um, so we're gonna save uh, and nitrogen is almost a dollar an end credit. So you're going to save about $160 an acre uh, right there on that field uh, because of the no need for N. Uh, on our other fields, you, uh, we're, we're probably only going to run, you know, 120 to 130 end credits like we've been doing. And, uh, and everything's going to be fine. So on the nitrogen side, we've been getting by since 2018 on a, a 20 to 30 percent reduced rate versus what uh, the retailers would recommend and the corn again we see no indicators saying we need more nitrogen ears are usually full to the tip uh, you don't see just some drastic tick back we still got good test weight still got good stock strength still very green going into the fall uh, in fact I'm, since 2018, um, my corn has been more green going into the fall than I traditionally have had it. And when I look across the road uh, to the to the conventional fields of where I used to be, you can clearly see it, it's more green. So um, we have the potential. It's either green because we need to move it up earlier, which I've already done, uh, or we can actually pull back a little bit more and and go from there. Um, so we'll do some more tests next year pulling back to see can we get to 40% reduced or 35% reduced um, and still have a good crop. Um, so we'll, we'll keep testing and keep on moving there. The other thing with the nitrogen program that we're using is we have a manual variable rate. So on first pass when the corn's up and running, um, we're going across the field. If you see a spot because of some weather event, you know, that's, that's our biggest thing up here. Our biggest thing up here is not no-till or, or strip-till or conventional till. Uh, that's how seed goes in the ground. The biggest thing is management after that uh, is the weather. And so uh, we had a couple timely rains in August and we end up with tremendous beans. As long as the beans are alive in August, at August 1st, if we get some rains, we can have some pretty good beans. Um, and and say, uh, the flip side is you could have the best looking crop of your life. And uh, at the end of July, uh, when pollination of the corn comes around, if you get some scorching heat, you can wipe 20, 30% of your production out because of pollination burnup. Uh, same thing in beans, you can wipe out. You know, there's been many years I've been out there at the end of July and you were like, holy crap, this is what 100 bushel beans look like. And then August comes by and uh, brings you back to reality and then you're back to 30 bushel beans. Um, so the weather's the biggest biggest factor in there. And that's the other thing I like about running a very minimalistic program, but we'll get to that. Let me finish my first point. Uh, with the manual variable rate, something happened to the field, a, a drown out, or not a drown out, but that spot got a little bit wet um, or whatever. It's normally a good spot. It's just running a little bit wet here. So I can hit the other rate, give that spot an extra shot of nitrogen and, and uh, 
uh, then on the back, once you exit, you know, you drop back to your normal rate. Same on the flip side. If you're coming along and you see a spot that's that's drowned out, uh, it's normally a good spot, but it's it's drowned out. Probably isn't going to produce much. <clears throat> we'll we'll shut that off on first pass. Uh, and we can pick it up on second pass, see what it looks like, or leave it on on first pass. Maybe there's a chance it can recover. When we're coming back with second pass, you can see, okay, it didn't recover. Let's shut it off on second pass, and uh, we'll take them couple gallons over to this other spot and give them to that spot and, and do very well. Um, so I like the manual variable rate program that we have. Um, it, it, it works very well. Uh, I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, overall, it's a very simplistic program that we're running. Um, I don't know what, I don't know how much more I need to explain. I think that covers it pretty good, don't you? I, I, I think we could almost just end it right here. I don't, I guess if you guys have questions, uh, if I'm missing something and you guys have questions, leave it below. Guys, thank you.